Hello everyone and welcome to our podcast. I'm Caitlin and today we'll be exploring the village of Ferns, situated in the heart of Wexford. Our first story is Dermot. This is a history of Dermot MacMurray, King of Leinster. I personally did audio for this one, so we know it will be good. Dermot MacMurray was the King of Leinster. He was known for his bad reputation. Dermot was born in the 12th century, around the year 1110. He was the son of Donick and Orla MacMurray and had a sister named Anna. As a child, he witnessed his father's death by the Hiberno Norse men from Dublin. His father's body was buried beneath their assembly hall with a dead dog as a sign of respect and loyalty. Dermot was appointed king after the death of his father. He was ferocious and showed no mercy, killing and blinding 17 rivals in 1141. Dermot was fearful he would remain in purgatory forever for his actions, so he built an abbey and paid many monks to pray for his forgiveness. He disputed with Tiernan O'Rourke, king of Brefni, and kidnapped his wife. Tiernan joined with the high king and exiled Dermot, who fled to England. Dermot petitioned to the Anglo-Normans for help. Richard de Clare, Earl of Pembroke, who was later known as Strongbow, agreed to lead an army to Ireland in exchange for Aoife's hand in marriage and land in Leinster. MacMurray returned to Ireland and reclaimed Wexford in 1167. He waited for Strongbow in the Abbey. Strongbow arrived and took the east coast. Dermot died in 1171, leaving Strongbow to declare himself King of Leinster. He was buried in Fern's Cathedral. Dermot will always be remembered for being the man who brought the English into Ireland. Well, that was sure interesting. David Attenborough better watch out. I'm coming for his job. Coming up next is the true story of Ferns Castle by five local boys. So tourists beware, there are aliens everywhere. Ferns Castle was built in medieval times. Is what you believe, but it was actually built in 1902 with the help of aliens. Here's a picture of Ferns in 1930. Looks pretty real, right? Wrong. Here's the real picture. Aliens thought they were, they were in Egypt and built a pyramid, then realised they weren't in Egypt and uh, didn't bother finishing it. Yeah, that makes sense because aliens obviously built the pyramids. Uh, what's the other theory, Toby? They did build a castle, but they accidentally blew it up with their laser guns from space. They didn't bother rebuilding it. Yeah, sounds pretty real to me. Here we have Dr Phil who's going to tell us a little bit about the castle. Uh, hello, my name is Dr Phil. How is the castle so tall? I don't know. How can people have built that high back then? Aliens confirm, like. Well, good point. Yep. How is it still standing? No clue. Alien technology. Aliens confirmed. Well, those are some great points, Dr. Phil. We will now have an interview from Paddy McDonald. Thank you. I have Paddy McDonald here with me. What do you think about these theories? Uh, I think it's absolutely ridiculous. Really? What What do you think? About it. Uh, I think that it was built underwater by intelligent fish and uh, then after a while uh, the water level lowered and uh, it can now be seen. Really? Yeah. Very interesting indeed. Um, yeah. Okay, that's all. <laughs> so now we actually have a man who uh, witnessed an alien. His name's Dedoid. Hello. So uh, where did you see this alien? Beside the castle. So, uh, if I'm correct, it was a UFO now. Yeah. So, uh, uh, yeah. Tell us, a, tell us a bit about this UFO. It was big and round. Was it now? All right. So, when did you see it? Yesterday. Yesterday. All right. Okay. All right. So, what did it look like exactly? It was orange. Orange, right. Now, are you sure, by any chance, this wasn't a cement mixer? <laughs> I, I didn't know. Because there was a cement mixer beside the castle yesterday. I'm not sure. All right, well, uh, thanks for that anyway. Thank you. Thanks for watching, and don't forget to like and subscribe to Media School, or else a uh, cat pit over in your nose.
was me playing a piece of music. I'll now have a well-deserved ad break, but don't go away. I'll be back shortly. Are you looking for a water cure or just local water in general? Come to Ferns to get the best water curing water. Call 053 936 6111 or follow us on Facebook at Ferns Water. Earlier on, I sent a f- reporter around Ferns to ask some locals what they know about the village. I don't really know how much I know about the history of Ferns, but I know a bit. So, um, well, it was the ancient capital of, of, of the Kingdom of Leinster. And um, definitely there has been... There have been people living in this area from prehistoric times, we know that. And the castle was was one of the castles built by William Marshall. So, and Ferns was very important up to probably the 14th century and declined a bit after that. But, um, yeah, that's basically what I know. I really like the village of Ferns. I've lived here all my life. Well, I know that Ferns has a huge place in early medieval history. Uh, it was a very important religious site that uh, St. Aidan came and established a monastery in, in Ferns in the uh, 6th century and that, uh, I suppose, it played a, a very important part in the history of the church from then up to medieval times, up to probably the arrival of the Normans in the 12th century. And even then, uh, I suppose, it's very, very important in terms of the Normans coming into Ireland and, uh, I suppose, they, they ruled for several hundred years until... Uh, the the, um, the English and uh, parliamentarians came in and so on. So it's a very important site, both from a religious and historical viewpoint. Well, Ferns has a huge history. Um, in relation to the national history, Ferns would have been um, extremely well known originally in, in, in olden times. It was the um, ecclesiastical centre of Ireland, um, the ecclesiastical capital of Ireland. Uh, and so basically um, a lot of the um, religious affairs of Ireland centre through Ferns and there was an old saying that what Dublin is uh, what Ferns was Dublin is and Cork will be that's oh. part of the old thing I know things about the castle and the abbey and the well I knew very little until I started working as a tour guide here and then I had to learn a little bit about it yeah. and I suppose I realised how important the castle was in ancient history and how important the location was in ancient Irish history and how it is connected with the arrival of the Normans and the story of the arrival of the Normans and how the arrival of the Normans changed Irish history and landscape for the future. We got some great answers there. Now it's time for our last story, The Girl. Once upon a time, a girl walked 500 miles and she dreaded the fact she had to walk 500 more. But she continued anyway. She came across a castle in the location of Ferns. Slowly she started to discover this castle. The castle was built in the 13th century by William Marshall. In that moment of time, there was only two towers remaining, and the castle was originally a square with four towers. She went to check out the moat, and, oh, she just fell. Oh, okay. She gets back up and sees a figure in the distance. Is it a bird? Is it a plane? No, it's just Dermot. He leads her to the stairs inside the castle. The stairs were very steep and she was out of breath. She continued to follow Dermot to the roof of the castle as she suddenly comes across a trip step. And she fell to the bottom again and began to climb them again. Eventually she arrived at the roof of the castle. She looked out at the edge of the beautiful town of Ferns. The girl looked at Dermot and asked, Do you have a toilet? Dermot looked at her and said, Uh, Yeah, it's over there. The girl looks over to see a hole in the middle of a roof, leading down to the stream in the moat. She looks at Dermid like he was a crazy man. Slowly, she backs away and continues running 500 miles home. I'm in studio now with Sean. I'm about to interview him about the workshop he took place in to create these three wonderful films. Okay, so what have you been learning in the last five days? Uh, How to do audio. So, why did you want to do this workshop? Uh, Because I was told to. So, where did it take place? Uh, In front of the Green Centre. So, who ran the workshop? Tony. Was it fun? Yeah. So, uh, just one fun question there at the end. 
if you were back in the time of the castle and all that, would you have been a hunter or a gatherer? Hunter. Why is that? Because you get to shoot people. I think I would have been a hunter too. Okay, so that's all we have time for on our show today. Thanks to all our participants. I've been Caitlin and you've been blown away.